Now, yes, we need a certain amount of intelligence. We need to plan for the future without question. But if our planning for the future messes up and makes today full of anxiety and stress and frustration and fear, then we're in the wrong and we're not thinking and behaving as we should. That's not God's will for your emotions. That's not God's will for your mind. That's not God's will for your body. Can you say amen? God's will is that we come and eat today. And then tomorrow when we get there, we'll take care of tomorrow. Amen. Hallelujah. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. It is meant for an experience with the shepherd. Now you see folks, listen to this. A person has to eat to keep up their strength. A person has to eat to keep up their strength. We have the story of David. In Samuel, David was fighting and him and his men, they got hungry. And so they went by the temple with the priest. The temple in those days was a big tent. So David went into the temple and went into the priest, the Holy of Holies. He said, I'm hungry. Me and my men, we need something to eat. And I'm paraphrasing, but you can read the story for yourself. He said, I'm hungry. Me and my men, we're hungry. We need something to eat. The priest said, well, I don't have any food. All I have is just a showbread, which is, which is the holy bread made for the priests. David said, give it to me. Give it to me. I'm going to eat it. Well, yeah, but this is only for the priests. No, you don't understand. I'm hungry and I'm doing the will of God. Me and my men, we're in the will of God. We are holy. I'm holy. They're holy. This is holy bread. And for us to keep up our strength, we need to eat it. So bring it. So the scripture tells us that the priest gladly brought the showbread to David. And he and his men ate it. You see, folks, you have to eat to give up your strength. That means we got to come to church to keep up our strength. That means we got to study the word to keep up our strength. That means we need to talk about God one with another to keep up our strength. Yes. Can you say amen? amen? Come and eat. Another place in the scripture where that they were being criticized for not fasting. So we're not fasting while we're fighting. There's no fasting while we're warfaring. You have to eat to keep up your strength. I encourage us this morning. The Lord here says, He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Listen now, before I can eat, I must then let go of my need to feel safe and secure. I, I must let go and trust that the shepherd, the Lord is in full control and knows what he's doing. He prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And sometimes for me to eat means I have to let go of control and believe that he's in full control and that he knows what he's doing and I'm not going to ask foolishly, what are you making for us to eat? I'm just going to come, trust, obey, eat, grow in strength, and then be prepared for today, tomorrow. He says in verse 4, Thou art with me. Neither I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Folks, don't ever forget that Jesus Christ is with you. Yes, amen. That Jesus Christ is with me. Jesus Christ is with the United States of America. Amen. I don't care how much crazy is going on in the world. I don't care how much crazy is going on in our country. I don't care how much crazy, crazy is. Jesus Christ is in control of the body of Christ upon the face of the earth. Jesus Christ is in control of the destiny of the United States of America. Jesus Christ is in control of my destiny. And I don't need to worry about what that destiny is. I need to just come, trust, obey, and eat. Thou art with me.
Just last weekend in this area, there was a conference, some kind of a conference on living in the supernatural. Let me tell you something, this is living in the supernatural. I've lived in the supernatural my whole life. When you can trust and obey, when you have nothing to eat and you open the refrigerator and you look at your mom and there's absolutely no food in there and you look at your mom and you say, Mom, we're going to eat. And mom says, oh, I don't know, honey. We'll find something. Jesus will take care of us. That's living in the supernatural. When you walk out of your garage and you're in the fourth grade and you're starving to death because you're so poor, your dad's a preacher of a local church, but you're poor. You have one pair of pants. You have one pair of jeans. You go play football in the mud with your friends, and when you come home late in the evening, you take a hose and you go outside and you wash off all the mud off of that one pair of jeans and off those one pair of shoes. And after you've washed them all, you put them into the washing machine. You wash them, you put them in the dryer, you take them out of the dryer, and the next day you put on that one pair of jeans and that one pair of tennis shoes because you're so poor. That's all you've got to live. That's all you have to wear. And then you go to church and you worship God on Sunday. You go to, you go to Royal Rangers on Wednesday. You worship God on Wednesday. And when, when you're with your friends, you minister and you witness Jesus Christ that He's the Savior of all of mankind. That there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. And the next day you do it all over again. Let me tell you something. That's living in the supernatural. Amen. When you stare death in the face, you've looked death directly into the eyeballs of death. More than one time, that's living in the supernatural. And when you can come and eat at the table that has been prepared for you in the midst of your great enemies, and you can block out those enemies and trust and obey, and just come and eat at the great fountain, drink of the great fountain, and eat at the great feast of the table of Lord God Almighty. Folks, I'm here to tell you something. That's living in the supernatural. When you have every reason to doubt God, but you don't doubt God and by faith you trust in Him. That's living in the supernatural. When you have every reason to be discouraged and to be frustrated, but you don't. But you cry out to God Almighty. Let me tell you something and He encourages you. That's living in the supernatural. And when you can't wait to get to church uh, and you sing the courses and you lift your hands uh, and you worship Lord God Almighty in the midst of your enemies, that's living in the supernatural. When a person can say, look up to heaven and say, God, either heal me or take me. Either heal me or take me. Whatever brings you the most glory, let your will be done in my life. I'm here to tell you, that's living in the supernatural. Somebody say amen. Amen. I end with this before we partake of communion. Listen closely now. When a person comes and eats at the table set by the Lord in the presence of his enemies. When a person can come and eat at the table that has been prepared by the Lord in the presence of his enemies. It keeps Life in balance. You see, here's the problem with so many people today in the world. Their lives are so out of balance. Their lives are so cockeyed. Famous person on TV the other day was on the internet. This person brags often about being a Christian, going to church. Often talks about the Lord, God bless you, God bless them, going to church, doing these things. Promotes a lifestyle that's not equivalent to what one should live as a Christian life, but proclaims themselves as Christians. Made a decision the other day that their career was more important than their family. And so after much prayer, and after much thought, they made the decision to disobey God. Thought. After much prayer, and after much consideration, I've come to the conclusion 
that I'm going to disobey God. Uh, folks, people's lives are so out of balance. They're overweighed over here. Things that should be of no importance whatsoever consumes their lives. And the things that should be most important are completely neglected. And the balance of their lives is completely cockeyed. And so to try to balance it, it's way over here. Then the pendulum swings way over here. And now it's out of balance over here. It's like sitting in a canoe with a jerk. <laughs> and the jerk begins to rock the canoe. And you're going, dude, stop rocking the canoe. And the more you shout at him, stop rocking the kundu. You know, the kundu, not the kundu, but the kundu. Stop rocking the kundu. <laughs> they rock it even more. See, that's just like sometimes we can tell people, family members, friends, loved ones, whoever it might be, stop doing this, stop doing that, stop doing this, stop doing that. But well, maybe what we should be saying to them is rather just... Come and eat. There's a table that's been prepared. Come and eat. Come and eat. And Christians, our lives can be just like that. We can get out of so out of balance. And if we don't come and eat and dine to the table to which the Lord has prepared for us. We're going to be out of balance. And then we're going to pray prayers that we shouldn't be praying. We're going to think thoughts that we shouldn't be thinking. We're going to feel emotions that don't belong to us. And then it's going to lend ourselves to making decisions that we shouldn't be making. And then we talk in ways that we shouldn't be talking. And then we're too discouraged to, to come to the table and eat because of all of the out of balance and the troubles and the enemies and the fears and everything that's going on. We go running over there and the Lord says, what are you doing over there? And we shout back, I'm looking for satisfaction. The Lord says, so come and eat. What are you doing over there? I'm looking for fulfillment. So come and eat. What are you doing over there? I'm looking for safety. Dude, just come and eat. What are you doing over there? I'm looking for help. Thank you.